this definition, well, that's interesting. Is that a locomotive? Um, how will the relation between, between relationship between chemistry and other fields change in the future? Well, that's the same thing I've just answered, actually. It's already changed um, in a way that not many people appreciate, and certainly people who are non-scientists, and of course the, the number of scientists who are running universities today is, is very poor. I mean, if, if chemistry had as bad a reputation as economics has at the present time, or politics, or many other subjects, um, they wouldn't be vice chancellors in charge of. of uh, you mean, but you know, chemistry has a pretty good reputation from penicillin, the harbour process, and uh, various um, polymers and stuff like that. So, chemistry is a subject which has made massively positive contributions to society. A few negative ones, obviously, but that's the way science, science uh, society uses it. Um, Whereas somehow economics, economists and politicians seem to be able to get away with murder uh, when they're, they're, their sort of area is a bunch of cobblers as far as I'm concerned. Um, but um, it has changed already and as I said people don't fully understand that and if they go down the line um, and say that chemistry is, is a dog that's had its day, they will be making a massive mistake because in many ways it's almost a sort of language of understanding of the world in which we live. And I don't see how you can do really great uh, molecular biology without a really deep understanding of chemistry. And uh, I think, of course, I would say that, wouldn't I? But I, I, I feel that very strongly. Um, the change has already occurred. We need to ensure that the future, there are departments are, uh, have people in them who can talk together in the coffee room about chemistry, about condensed matter physics. I mean, in my case, radio astronomy was very important. And uh, uh, it was uh, our early work um, in 1975, uh, Dave Walton and myself making carbon chains with a student, Alexander, and then um, working with Takeshi Oka and Canadian astronomers Lon Avery, Norm Broughton and John McLeod where we discovered the carbon chains in space and interest in radio astronomy led to my ideas about carbon in space and um, the chance meeting with um, Rick Smalley who created the apparatus uh, whose raison d'etre was to discover C60 and that was uh, because Bob Curl said, oh, you know, Rick's doing some interesting stuff, go, on, go on over and have a look. And I think that lesson is an important one. Um, there, you know, there's research which is focused, we want to make a better transistor, we want to def get our laser so, or our sort of lithographic process to be finer, this and the other. But that's only so far you can go. The next breakthrough will have to be, if there is one, will be in molecular computing. And we've got a molecular thing in our head which is pretty amazing. So it can be done. It was done by biology a long time ago. And it's called chemistry. I mean, we are sort of complex test tubes in which chemistry, a lot of chemistry occurs.